epic, noun, a long narrative poem in elevated style, recounting the deeds of a legendary or historical hero, a classic being the Odyssey. Two of my favorite things in life are bicycles and beer. So in January, I began planning my journey. Here I present to you the epic of Bike to Bruise. For the previous two years, I have been the volunteer cycling coordinator for the Eagle Mount Cycling Club. We help with the adaptive bike fitting and arrange weekly rides for adults with physical disabilities. A dear friend suggested I turn Bike to Bruise into a fundraiser for our club. In addition to raising money, one of my greatest ambitions was to create awareness around adaptive cycling. My route was strategically planned so that I would visit 26 microbreweries throughout these three states. My fundraising consisted of pledges from fabulous folks like you, and at several breweries along the way, I had arranged to do raffle drawings with my fellow beer-consuming patrons. Walking up to dozens of strangers to ask them for money was a stretch to even my gregarious personality. Riding my bike 1,200 miles was easy. All I had to do was pedal. If you view a 1,200-mile bike ride, grad school, a home purchase, or any major decision like you would view this stretch of railroad, it can be entirely overwhelming. Instead, look down, or in my case, lie down, and view your challenge one railroad tie at a time. On the second day of my tour, Jay joined me for the 47 miles from Lewis and Clark Caverns to Butte. This section of the route included an 18-mile climb. He joked that we always needed to add weight to my bike so that they could keep up with me, but on the sense, I didn't, uh, didn't stand a chance. People have asked me again and again what the best part of my tour was. I was so impressed by the full engagement of all five senses. As Skalkaho Falls thundered behind me, I could feel the cool mist beat up on my exposed skin. I could taste and smell the lush vegetation that surrounded me. I could see the power of the water by the earth that had shifted around it. From an early age, my parents have demonstrated the spirit of volunteerism, and I couldn't have asked for bigger cheerleaders throughout my epic. My mom is the strongest and most incredible woman I know. She enthusiastically joined me for one of the most technical and challenging parts of the route over Skalkaho Pass. You guys have to drink when I drink. Some of you may remember the former Lang Creek Brewery, one of Montana's earliest craft breweries that happened to be started by my grandparents. It will always be my favorite. So when people ask me which brewery I liked the best, I really couldn't say. One location had excellent beer, while another had remarkable atmosphere. This was a delectable flight of organic brewery at Wildwood. Being alone was preeminently the most influential part of my tour. I learned more about myself than even I knew possible. I was given the opportunity to let go of things that no longer served me. I dropped inhibitions and found a new level of comfort with myself and with others. No matter how awesome and primed my repair kit was, my one and only mechanical and the events to follow completely caught me off guard. Two chain ring bolts fell out, causing me to be stuck in my largest ring. The headwinds were brutal, and I was cruising along at about five miles an hour. It was all I could do to just not break down. The man I hitched a ride with was my age, and he had literally just left his wife. He was tired of fighting and disappointed that his young son heard them. Our time together consisted of him pouring his heart out and me listening. The car ride was surreal, and perhaps I was able to help him in some small way. Notice the flags not flying in one direction? It was really bad. <laughs> If you've never been on Highway 75 between Stanley and Ketchum, add it to your list pronto. The Sawtooths are one of the most awe-inspiring ranges I have ever seen. I basked in every moment of my 70-mile ride that took me up and over Galena Pass. Adaptive recreation facilities exist across the country. Our programs differ in many ways, but we all have a common goal to provide therapeutic, recreational opportunities for folks with disabilities. I was very blessed to receive such tremendous support from the interns and staff members at Higher Ground who promoted my tour at the Sawtooth Brewery in Ketchum. My one rule during the tour was to accept generosity. Karen and Rich stopped me on the bike path between Ketchum and Haley, asked me about my travels, then offered me a place to stay. We stopped at Sun Valley Brewery for a pint, then headed to their house where Rich grilled swordfish and bok choy in celebration of Karen's birthday that day. I only rode 14 miles, but I made lifelong friends. 
Life is full of moments that should be celebrated. When you're pedaling a 105 pound bike with a meager 18 gears, summits are an exceptional reason for celebration. On the underside of my down tube, I have a flask gauge, thank you Eric, um, filled with Evan Williams. At every summit, Evan and I would celebrate, then the descent would begin. I love traditions. I climbed Teton Pass on my way from Victor, Idaho to Jackson, Wyoming. It was by far the most challenging climb I tackled during my tour. I was in and out of my saddle, smiling, grunting, and reminding, us, reminding myself that I truly was capable of extraordinary things. And just like everything that goes up, something comes down. I hit a new personal record that day, 55.1 miles an hour. I don't think I will ever be able to enjoy driving through a national park again. Being on my bicycle allowed me the freedom to let my gaze wander. I could slow down and not worry about a line of traffic behind me. I highly recommend pedaling through a park. Roy and June have been married 63 years. Every summer they travel from Texas to, to be campground hosts in Montana. We made an unusual connection during a conversation that lasted well into the late evening. Two years ago, they remember a stranger handing them a cupcake on her 30th birthday at Langer Campground. That stranger was me. While most epics have an epic hero, Odysseus being the quintessential example, in this epic, there isn't one. I just happen to be the one with strong Irish thighs and a palate for craft beer, but you are the true heroes. Last year, 1,400 volunteers donated 32,000 hours to Eagle Mount, and this year, thanks to your pledges and support, Bike to Brews brought in $5,500. Communities are the real heroes. One more thing. A lot of people ask me along the way, what if you don't make it? You're a single woman traveling alone, what if something goes wrong? My reply, what if I do make it? What if nothing goes wrong? So here's my challenge to you, go ahead and try it out. What if everything goes right? What if you do meet the man or woman of your dreams? What if you do succeed? Cheers.